I've been driving its little baby brother, the E208, for the past year. Today we are in the E2008, the larger version of the vehicle, all electric, of course, and we are in the 2022 completely new model. They have refreshed some of the underlying tech, which is what we're definitely getting into today. Peugeot have committed themselves that by 2025 they will be offering 40 full electric or plug-in hybrid versions across all of their brands. My name is Luke, hit subscribe if you haven't, and this is The Future is Electric. So if you're new to the channel, you might have missed the very first video I had released, a review of my E208, where I speak about purely the tech of the vehicle, which is very similar, in fact, mostly the same for this E208. So I do refer you back to that review if you want to get more information on certain details being discussed today. As we had said, the car is built on the CMP platform. It was a collaboration between the PSA group and the DFG group, PSA now Stellantis, and it allowed for the vehicle to be built as full electric, petrol or diesel on the same exact production line. So this is a 400 volt pack, 50 kilowatts in size with 45 kilowatts of usable storage. So they haven't changed anything there when related to the battery pack. Same battery pack you're going to find in the E208 as well. Battery cells are coming from Chinese manufacturer CATL. If you want to learn more about the cells themselves, about the battery cooling, which I go into detail on in my other review, it is now being relinked above for your convenience. Now compared to 2020, Stellantis have recently announced that they are expecting to achieve a 40% reduction in costs at the module level of the pack by 2024. That just goes to show the improvements being made um, in battery tech when related to electric vehicles. So cheaper EVs with this sort of reduction are definitely in the pipeline. So same exact motor we spoke about before, car achieves a top speed of 150 kilometers per hour, 260 newton meters of torque, 134 brake horsepower, and a zero to 100 speed of 8.5 seconds. Um, however, like the E208, the biggest oomph you get is in those first three seconds where it just leaps off the line, especially if you're in sport mode. Definitely not the fastest EV out there in this range, but compared to any petrol car, you'll get off the line much, much quicker. So range is one of the things that's seen an improvement in this 2022 model of the E208. A great thing here is they haven't increased the range by increasing the battery. Battery has stayed exactly the same. They are just being more efficient in different areas of the vehicle to increase the range. So how much has the range increased? Well, WLTP has gone up from 331 kilometers in the older model to 342 kilometers in this model. How are they achieving that? Well, they've put in A plus more efficient um, tires. A lot of automakers are doing this. They're changing the tires and the tread and thus achieving more efficiency out of them. They've added a heat pump as standard to cool the cabin, which I've, to be honest, I've seen in most of the higher end brands. And it's great to see Peugeot introducing the heat pump at this sort of tier of vehicle. Another thing they've changed is the gear ratio. So there's no gearbox in an electric car, but you have one gear, which is always there, which is reducing the speed of the electric motor, which is spinning at a huge uh, RPM. And that is being reduced one time to drive the wheels. And they've changed the ratio from the previous model and this new ratio achieves better efficiency. Lastly, they've added a humidity sensor um, on, the, on the windscreen here, and that better manages the, the, the cabin and, and, and better identifies uh, how much energy it needs to use to cool the cabin. So all these things put together has resulted in an increased WLTP range. I want to talk a bit about WLTP. So the WLTP is 342 kilometers on this vehicle. 
I'd like to speak about it a bit from my perspective as an E208 owner, so the smaller vehicle, and for the past year here in Malta. So that vehicle had a WLTP of 340 kilometers, slightly less than this new one. It is a smaller car though. And over the year, that range fluctuates when I charge the car to full, it fluctuates from as low as 300 kilometers to as high as 360 kilometers. So as soon as the cold weather starts to, hit, starts to hit, the range starts to go down. Weather gets warmer, um, range starts to increase. Weather is very warm, range decreases once again. And so in Malta, we do have great conditions in the sense because you don't get greater than that WLTP in most countries, at least from what I hear. So the fact that we are, we average that 25 degrees Celsius, which EVs or EV batteries are happiest in, means we're able to achieve these very uh, good ranges. So that's important to note but when you're looking at the WLTP of a vehicle, that it is going to fluctuate in charge. It does not mean your battery has suddenly degraded and you're stuck with 300 kilometers forever. It is a temporary thing. And this happens in an internal combustion engine too. It's just not apparent to us in the dashboard. The second you're using more energy to cool your cabin, the second you're using more energy to heat your cabin, you're consuming more energy. So nothing has changed. It's just more evident now because you have the kilometer rating right on your dashboard in front of you. So Peugeot have a normal regen mode when in drive mode and very, very light like in all electric vehicles. And then you can make a stronger regen mode by engaging the B mode done from the shifter over here. Now, they have reduced the strength of the region in this um, upgraded model. For anyone who is not an EV enthusiast, that's a good thing because the car, the second you let go of that gas pedal, doesn't chug to a stop. For an EV enthusiast like me, I kind of like my region, man. So, um, slight disappointment there that there, I guess, is no way to increase the region strength um, once, once it's engaged. Let's talk a bit about charging. Um, the car can charge on DC fast charging in just 30 minutes. Um, however, with the, multi, with the current Maltese architecture, it's, going, it's a 50 kilowatt charge, so it will take the car an hour to charge on DC fast charging. On the AC charging, which is most of the time what you're going to be using, particularly in a city and small island environment like ours, this is if you're charging at home, if you're charging at the office, if you're charging on the road network, not using the rapid chargers, you're going to be using AC charging. And the car comes with a standard 7.4 kilowatt charger, single phase. Now, even if you don't have three phase supply at home, you might consider getting the three phase option charger in this vehicle, which is going to increase or rather decrease your charging time. So that is upgraded to an 11 kilowatt system, which charges the car again on three phase in just four and a half hours. Um, so even if you don't have three phase at home, I would recommend you getting the three phase option um, because it's going to mean you're going to charge quite a bit faster on the road network versus if you take the standard 7.4 kilowatt charger. Now, charging, obviously the spec sheet, I am always going to tell you the fastest times. And I know because I've heard the shock of people when they plug in their car at home and they see the time go instead of the four hours I'm telling you, it goes up to like 23 hours remaining. If you want to learn more about charging, because there are a bit of details you have to understand, do check out the many charging videos I've produced, um, reviews on electric chargers, charging with experts. So, so do check them out to learn more about charging so you don't end up with the shock of plugging in your car at home and it tells you 25 hours remaining for a full charge. Um, another interesting thing I'd like to mention, give a shout out to the great website evdatabase.org. I have it open here on my phone. Um, they have, once you bring up the vehicle model, the charging time, so they're all listed here. And depending on what supply you're giving the vehicle. So for example, um, with this uh, E2008, which we're in today, if you charge using a normal three pin wall plug, the one we're, we're used to, the, the normal plug that goes in the wall, that reaches a speed of just 2.3 kilowatts, which means it will take 23 hours to charge this vehicle. 
If you upgrade to the Type 2 system, which you should, that goes to 3.7 kilowatts, which charges the car in 14 hours and a half. Upgrade to the 7.4 kilowatt system, which is the fastest that comes with this as standard, that charges the car in seven hours, 15 minutes. Again, as I mentioned, three phase then jumps to um, charging the car in just four hours and a half. Exactly. So as I said earlier, I have skipped a lot of the details because they have remained mostly the same. So if you want a great overview of the electric tech in this vehicle, which hasn't changed in this refreshed model, and do check out my video of the E208, again, linked above. Um, hit the like button if you enjoy the content. Subscribe always makes us happy. And I'd like to thank Michael Attart Limited for letting us take out this E2008 today. Uh, Peter, for helping out with, with all the technical. And as always, I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric.